What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. This has no uh, negative impact on my buddy Steve, Steve Connell, who's an excellent technician, mechanic, and person who works at Pep Boys and not the Pep Boys near me. This car here, okay? This car here. This customer I met years and years and years ago said he had Pep Boys do some suspension work for his car and gave him his car back, rattling just as bad as, he, as it was after he spent $2,000 on suspension work. This is how I met this guy. So I look at what they did, uh, and I said, hey, here's what, they, here's what they didn't do to resolve your problem. I'm not going back there. I just want you to fix it. As you see today, he's here with the Pep Boys oil change sticker currently in his window. And I said, wow, you know, not too many people are driving around this Mitsubishi, so I, I remember a lot of things. And his complaint is that his brakes are screaming. So I look at the brake work that was done, and I say, wow, I see new pads and rotors in the back, but the rear brakes are howling. I'm not sure when he did this work, um, but then I see he went in for an oil change because there's a receipt in this car, and then his complaint are the rear brakes are making tons of noise. And what does Pep Boys do? They just check off that the friction material thickness is good with no recommendations or anything. Why would they? They just did the brakes. Why would they say that there's anything wrong with their brake job? Well, they should have. A 280,000 mile vehicle in most cases, isn't just gonna be a set of pads and rotors. There are so many other things that wear out in 280,000 miles. On top of his engine oil has absolutely no oil on the stick. We did a previous video on this. It's burnt in its owner. So the oil change place, Pep Boys, is not advising the customer properly, right? Uh, that his car is burning oil at 280,000 miles. And then how can you help this customer prevent or stop or control his oil company with something by making the right recommendations for the situation. So once I looked at the brake job, I'm like, all right, well, the calipers are worn out in the back, the brackets are worn out in the back, I see new pads and rotors, of course your brakes are gonna scream. Now, do I trust their friction material? I, I can't tell you anything about that friction material because it's not a product that I use. I can tell you, we don't have these problems with our brakes at Mining for Cinnamon City. So then I look at the front brakes and they're less than 50%. And I grab the calipers and I rock them around. The calipers are rattling in the front. Why? 280,000 miles worth of worn components. So but my point to this is, why do you keep going back to a place that gives you the wrong recommendations and then they give you a, uh, a pass, right? Well, I, hey, I know Mr. Customer that we just charged you $600 for rear pads and rotors and your brakes are screaming and they shouldn't be. Like everybody knows your brakes shouldn't be screaming. Noise from time to time or once in a while is acceptable, but not screaming. Why did you continue to go back? You should come back here to where you don't have any problems, but you continue to go back there. And this is where what I don't understand. If someone makes sense to me about this whole situation. You keep going there, you keep going there. They don't tell you your engine's burning oil. Don't follow our oil change stickers. You know, If that was the case, then his engine wouldn't be low on oil because this customer would be aware that and his four quarts of oil or four and a half quarts of oil, there's no oil reading on the stick. And then he would be taking measures to make sure that his engine doesn't blow up because he's burning up his oil. On top of his brakes screaming in the back that he just paid for, then he went for an oil change and I read the documentation. And I'll show you. Uh, where is it? Sometimes you just need to know, and the customers aren't willing to tell you what's going on. Nine twenty-three. Nine twenty-three. Mileage. There's a mileage here, pet police. Mileage in and out. Nothing. Are you shocked? So here's what... Here is what the technician says. I don't know what combo, side, top, $2.19 is. Battery protection service at $10.80. Brake inspection with zero. 
oil filter was five dollars. Pennzoil uh, synthetic oil change was forty-eight dollars. Tire rotation zero. Pennzoil eco box. So let's see what he paid for an oil change. He paid one hundred and fifteen dollars for an oil change. He can get valve. He can get Valvoline Restore and Protect here for $90 and start addressing his engine versus paying a hundred, let me show you. $115, I just read that to you, with some stupid battery cleaning protection thing, some bullshit that they padded their engines with. But let's just, let's just go back to what the customer, customer says, synthetic or high mileage, Pepwis, Battery protection element. I'm not sure which brake service I need. I don't know what any of that crap means. But there is a spot in here that says why he was there. Brakes. There we go. Read that. Rear brakes squealing when in reverse. Well, they just did the brakes before this, before this visit. So now he's here to get an answer on why his brakes, but he's getting more value here, right? He's getting more value. Because if they would tell him that you're using the wrong oil for your engine for your oil consumption problem, he would be aware of what's going on in this 280,000 mile vehicle. And it's obviously he's tried to take care of this as best as he can to make it 280,000 miles on a Mitsubishi at that. So why do you continue to go back to that service provider. It makes no sense to me. I could throw a stone probably and hit their parking lot, not necessarily their building, but hit their parking lot mm -hmm. from my shop. Mm -hmm. And there's a line of cattle <laughs> over there throwing out money and not getting taken care of. It makes no sense. Thanks for watching.